What's up, everybody? I don't know that I ever actually reviewed the novel, like officially, even though it was one of my rare five-star reviews. And that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't know that I ever actually re reviewed the novel. If I did, I'll find it and I will put a card in one whatever corner it will show up in. I just finished Daisy Jones and the Six, the adaptation done by Reese Witherspoon Studio uh, that was streamed and still available for streaming on Amazon Prime. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know, a, you have an, a, a little bit of an idea because you get my out of five rating and a little bit of brief thoughts, like a sentence or two, like on in my Instagram stories. And I rated it four out of five. I did enjoy it. We will start it off by saying I did enjoy it. It took me a second to get into it. I watched the first episode the day it came out. And at the end of it, it's like, you know what? I'm good. I don't I don't feel the need to binge this show. Like, because they the way that they were releasing it, they released it in sets of three. And I didn't feel the need to watch episodes two and three the same day that I watched episode one. There are changes that are made from the novel, which is true of almost every single adaptation that exists. There's a very rare moment that there aren't changes made when it goes from book to screen. And that's because there's certain things that work in the book world that do not work in the screen world. That's just the way that it is. The whole thing, cause I saw it like being like blasted everywhere when it came out was about how the, the line where Daisy Jones is like, I wanna be the somebody. I feel like we lost that. And I guess before I should, um, before I go any further, there's possibility of spoilers. If you do not wish to be spoiled, maybe don't go past this point. Um, but before I get into potential spoilers, just know it is enjoyable. I do recommend um, reading the book first. And I recommend it as an audiobook because it's a full cast. And with the way that the novel being written in interview format, it just, it works out very well. I feel like we lose the whole wanting to be the somebody, like getting to be the somebody point for Daisy because she no she doesn't have her own music career where she has her own album. Like there, there's none of that before she is on before she's featured on Honeycomb or before they even potentially consider having her as a member of the Six. We're also just going to completely and totally gloss over the fact that. Daisy makes six in this adaptation. She makes the sixth person instead of them being seven, which is how they are in the novel. In all honesty, that's neither here nor there because the character that they quote, um, remove, he didn't, he didn't sway a lot of the story. I feel like they may have tried to, they may have tried to weave in a little bit of um, that character's whose name I'm completely and totally blanking on. Um, it was Eddie's brother. I remember that much, but I don't remember his name. Shows how much he was important. Um, I feel like they may have tried to just wrap that all into Eddie. And Eddie was annoying in the book. He's annoying on screen. Congratulations. You achieved that one. I feel like we kind of missed that moment. And so I don't know if that swayed some of the ways. Like, I... Like I continued watching because I wanted to know how they chose to do certain things, but there were just certain moments where I'm just like, I don't know. I, I'm not sitting here at the end of watching everything. I'm not sitting here with the same emotions that I had at the end of reading the novel. I, I'm not really sure how to feel about that. A slight, slight uh, grief on, um, on the way that, what they did with Billy at the end. So there's a moment in the novel when Billy's sitting at the bar because he is, he is in so much turmoil and like he's divided on whether or not he wants to actually act on his emotions uh, for Daisy or just kind of let it go because he is very committed to his wife, Camila. The, in the adaptation, they have Billy drink. He breaks his sobriety. And that's not something that happens in the novel. And I think it's so, it's so much stronger in the novel that Billy doesn't lose that that he doesn't make, um, he doesn't make the choice to break his sobriety, where there is an entire brief section of 
like the end, it's like episodes nine and 10, there are like brief little moments where he does. And it's just like, it's mostly in 10, I think, if I remember correctly. I did not like it. I did not like seeing Billy break his sobriety. Because, I mean, yes, it emphasizes the flaws of his character, but there were other things that exposed the flaws of him as a person. We didn't need to see him cheat with Daisy because he starts kissing Daisy and he's like, no, she's left me. What do I like? That was never a thing in the novel. And I did not like how that was. We missed the moment with Camila and Daisy of, I mean, like they, they had kind of a moment, like several episodes before, but there's this one because it's, it's the moment in the novel when we learn that the person who's been doing the interviewing the entire time is Julia, who is Billy and Camila's oldest daughter. Um, where, because like in this adaptation, they um, they didn't really like Billy only Billy and Camila only had Julia. They didn't have any other kids, at least from what we were shown um, in the adaptation. But in the novel, they also had a set of twins. And so it was a bigger deal. But like, regardless, I mean, it's still a good moment in the adaptation as well as it is in the novel of finding out that like, it's Julia that's doing this. They made that conversation that Julia witnessed be between Billy and Camila instead of Daisy and Camila. And it changes it just enough to where it's like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't, I just, I don't know. The ending, it, it's different and I'm not sure how to feel about it. That is, that is where we sit with that. I love the album. Like it's, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Listen to it all the time. That is probably honestly, that was probably the coolest aspect, in my opinion, that came from this novel being adapted is they they made the Aurora album. Did they make some like tweaks to uh, the songs? Because because <clears throat> in the novel, you have the full like lyrics for all of uh, all of the songs that are on the album. Yes, but they also included people who do this professionally. And no, no offense to Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, that is not what she does for a living. So it's good to include people who do this for a living and can make it to where it all fits with music and stuff and just sounds good. I thoroughly love the book. I enjoyed watching the series, but I don't know if it's one that I would rewatch. That's what I got. Um, if you have recommendations for things you would like to, uh, for me to consume, whether that is books, movies, music, whatever, Leave that in the comments below, but that's it for me. I will see you next video. Bye. Don't